this project is winding down. You can see there's the desk there, minus the top and the drop leaf. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and cut down the top to its individual sizes. And I'm getting ready for the rule joint. There's a lot of different methods, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of good ways to do it. I settled on this one here. Um, these hinges are from Horton Brass. Um, you can see they're fl uh, face mounted, except for the barrel. I've routed out for the barrel to fit in. Half inch uh, round over. This little fillet here, this little flat spot, 3 16 Half inch cove down here. This is the jig that's going to route this out. Let's step back in time and I will show you making this. You can see the base of it, three parts, very simple. They go together like that, but we have a spacer here. The spacer is going to go in there. That's a critical spacing. And then it gets glued up. The spacer comes out after it's all glued up. This aluminum plate goes on with screws. And this guy goes in there, epoxied against aluminum plate to form that little pocket right there. That's what it looked like in here. To make this joint work, there's a 32nd of an inch gap between the tabletop and the drop leaf. I'll tell you how we get to that later. But also, remember this flat spot here, that's 3 16 The corresponding cove on the drop leaf has a flat spot as well, right here. Well, this flat spot is 3 16 minus a 32nd. So we've got a 32nd setback and a 32nd difference in those flat spots. And that should give you somewhat of an even gap through that whole joint. So having already done my mock-up, my routers are all set up. I don't have to go through that again. A couple things to keep in mind here on uh, what I call the core, the top, the main, main body, it gets routed referencing from the top side. The drop leaf gets routed referencing off the bottom side. So what I have done, I've marked a big blue X there. That's the surface that I reference the uh, router from and a blue X there. That tells me, keeps me oriented. 
If you have not done a mock-up and you've never done this sort of joint before, I would say it's a necessity. First up, I'm gonna route the, um, that uh, round over and flat spot in the body of the top. Now, the bearing on that round over bit is gonna hit down here somewhere into dead space. So I'm going to add a straight edge to give it something to make contact with. Okay, I'm gonna take this in several passes. So you can see I've got the blue X up, that's my reference face, it's the bottom side. Uh, and this one, the uh, bearing does not have a problem down here. It'll have something to make contact with, so I don't need to uh, put anything down there. Let's go to it. Now I forgot to mention uh, about blowout. You can see I got blowout here. I wasn't concerned about it because I'm a full, almost an inch over in width on either side. And I'm gonna go back and trim that up. If you're right to size, just put something up against there to uh, back up your cut. This is the template that we made earlier for routing out um, access for that barrel. This little hole here where the barrel will fit in there and these can fit flush on the surface. Now if you have another method for um, attaching the hinges and you've done this before, by all means do what you're familiar with. If you've got a different hinge than this, this is the Horton Brasses H510 hinge, uh, you're going to have to change the sizing of the um, template here, potentially. This is the collar that will be used in the jig. It's 3 8 I don't know if you can see it there, but there's just a little bit of wiggle room. I want it just a little bigger for a couple reasons. One, I've got a quarter inch bit there. This is basically a barrel is basically a quarter inch. I want just a little bit of wiggle room. I also want a little wiggle room for that um, collar so it doesn't stick. So, this jig is symmetrical. This piece here is the same size as this piece. So when we route one side, it goes flush to the edge. Then we move over to the other side. It's flush to this edge right here. So let's go ahead and route this guy. So I've set the bit so it's going to go a little bit deeper than what's necessary. There's no magic number to um, how deep it goes. Uh, but you just want to make sure you have clearance and maybe just a little more. Now I am using a quarter inch bull nose. I happen to have one, so I'm using it. Um, it conforms to the shape of this. But you don't need to use a um, 
quarter inch bull nose, you can just use a straight cutter as well. That'll work just fine. And we are going to have to come back and clean up the edges in here. So I need to clear up, clean up these edges right here. Let's see if whoop, a little bit of something right in there. I want to get out. Okay. There. That's good. Before I sand the top and the drop leaf, I'm going to mount the hinges temporarily using steel screws, not the final screws. I want to know if there's anything that needs to change before I do all that sanding and stuff. Okay, now I'm going to put the screws in to this side, but I need to show you how to create that gap. So let's come down here and I will show you. This is a piece of veneer with a piece of blue tape on either side. Measures out almost exactly a 32nd of an inch. That's going to be my spacer to separate these two by 32nd. And I have two of these. One's going to go on this side, one's going to go over here. And make sure I'm even. And clamp in place. Now it's a matter of pre-drilling and mounting the remaining screws. So let's turn this guy over and see what we've got. Looks good.
we're on to the swing arm. That guy's going to pivot out, support the drop leaf. I'm going to use the multi-rotter and floating tenons. Refer to the drawing for all the locations of those mortises for those floating tenons. There's many different ways to join these together, not just the multi-router. Uh, you can use dominoes. Those little 5 by 30 guys fit nicely. You can use dowels. You can use the panther router. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. Now, keep in mind though, these two guys here, they're the same thickness. This guy, though, is a sixteenth under the thickness of these two, a thirty-second on either side. So whatever method you use, keep in mind to center uh, this guy on the thickness of these two guys. So we're on to the um, hinges, mounting, routing for the hinges on the swing arm. Uh, if you remember, on the drop leaf, those hinges were mounted like that. They were mounted on the surface. The barrel was recessed, but that leaf was on the surface, which means it's protruding down. The swing arm, when it moves out, has to clear that. So what I've done is I made this little guy. He sits on top of there. The um, swing arm is mounted downward and it'll clear that other hinge and it'll catch on this piece of leather here. This is about a quarter of an inch, so it'll come down about a quarter of an inch. Uh, this guy was glued on Gorilla Super Glue Gel, leather and wood. I'm sure there's other glues that work uh, well too. So I've already tested the depth of cut and we're using a pattern bit. It's got about a quarter inch uh, cutting length on it so it can get down here without and the bearing can grab here and make a shallow cut there. And I've already done my test piece so I'm good on the depth. So let's go ahead and route this guy. And this is the same Same jig as we did on the leg. On the leg, we, um, the router went in and it stopped here. We don't need that this time. We're going to route, oop, yeah, there's the top. We're gonna route from this side. So the drop hinge will be dropped down by that amount, right on there. So, There it is. And I need to clamp this guy in place. Oops, I think he moved. Let's. Now to avoid blowout, I'm gonna kinda 
route all along that line and relieve it all along that side and then route out the middle. Okay, we're good. Okay, let's temporarily put the top back on there and see what we've got. We've got the top clamped in place, not mounted yet. And the uh, swing arm is temporarily put in place. Let's test out our little spacer guy and see if he levels up the top. It's pretty good. We're good. So we're down to just sanding this guy up all the way 320 lightly easy edges and the uh, swing arm should already be uh, sanded up. Just go back and check for scratch marks and stuff. And then we can apply finish on these and then attach them and we're done. So I've applied finish to the swing arm and the top. Put, attach the hardware back on. I attach the little piece here with the uh, leather. And I actually glued a little piece of leather right here. So when this thing hits home, it hits on leather rather than wood. Now, one thing that I didn't count on or accounted for was right here. Let's zoom in right here and I'll show you. So here's where a screw is supposed to come up and attach the top. The slide's in the way. I didn't calculate for that. So, uh, what I'm going to do in the cut list, I'm going to expand this center piece out so it's wider uh, and accommodate a screw. The same is uh, true on the end down here, but here you can see what I've done is I've came back as I did on the center one and with my lamella machine, I cut a slot uh, for that tabletop fastener. So in the final plan, there will be screws right here, so that top will expand out on either side and locked in the middle. So I've got the top attached with clamps temporarily. I went all around. It's roughly inch and a quarter overhang on the sides. I checked all the way around, both sides rather, on the end. Inch and 13 sixteenths, check that, then I clamp it down. Once you do that though, you probably want to just double check for safety's sake that you've got no interference there. Now, now these are the tabletop fasteners we're using. Keep in mind how they work. When they attach in here, this little ledge, this little ledge here is what's catching. It's supposed to move back and forth on here. You want to catch somewhere in the center there. You don't want it to be up against that edge and have it contract and then you're in trouble. It has no room to move. So I'm using a 
number eight by five eighths screw. And we will pre-drill. Run the screw. There we go. Do that all around. So, we're done. It's been a long haul for me. This was a project for my daughter, my oldest daughter, Nicole. Um, it got put on the back burner a few times when commissions and other commitments came up. Uh, sometimes on the back burner for a month or two without being touched. But it's finally done. I hope you enjoyed the uh, process. Uh, I plan on doing more videos in the future. So hopefully we'll see you again. Mm -hmm.